Congressman Jamal Bowman here in Mount Vernon, New York 16th District. I'm here with the Teamsters, fighting with them, demanding a fair contract. And if we don't get it, shut it down. If we don't get it, shut, shut it down. down. I love seeing progressive lawmakers like Representative Jamal Bowman standing in solidarity with the UPS workers here. And it's worth getting into an update on what is happening with the labor contract negotiations between UPS workers and their employer. Now late this morning, the contract negotiations between UPS and the Teamsters unfortunately fell apart after UPS's final offer was unanimously rejected by the union's negotiating committee. Now the Teamsters are gearing up for a massive strike in what many workers say will be a strong show of force against UPS. And look, we have covered the story in the past, but in case you missed that coverage, and in case you're wondering why the union hasn't actually started the strike, considering how the negotiations have kind of fallen apart. Um, just keep in mind that the current contract doesn't expire until July 31st. Now with that said, here's some more details on what's currently happening. Uh, the Teamsters, which represent over 300,000 UPS workers, insist that they need time to review the contract and let their members vote on it before the contract expires. That's why the union has made it clear that they want a new contract by July 5th. Now that July, now that July 5th is here, it's today, and there's no agreed upon contract, it's a matter of time, it's a matter of waiting basically to see which side blinks first. When the Teamsters voted whether or not to basically authorize a strike against UPS, a whopping 97% of the voters were in favor of striking. And that gives the Teamsters quite a bit of cover, of leverage. And since the negotiations broke down this morning, they've been upping the ante. So the union tweeted just today the following, let's take a look. Strike preparations are shifting into high gear and strike captain training resources are coming soon to 176 UPS Teamster local unions. We've got more from North Carolina to the Pacific Northwest and Kentucky to Arizona. Practice picket lines have already picked up steam. And thus far, the union has made some pretty great progress in its negotiations. So even though things seem to have fallen apart this morning, they did make a little bit of progress. So an end to the widely despised two-tiered pay system. So essentially newer employees that are hired to UPS get paid a different way from more senior employees. And that creates a rift among the workers, I talked about that that with a representative from the union on this show. You could check that out for more details. Also protections from forced overtime on workers and also some days off. And temperature protections like air conditioning and heat shields, which is super important, especially for those who are delivering these packages. Um, so I've got more details for you, John, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, the amazing thing is when you were listing like some of the demands, I know obviously we've covered a lot of different, you know, uh, either per, per possible strikes or actual strikes that have been established. And very often it's the exact same things that are being asked for. Mm -hmm. And not just like, you know, higher pay or, you know, more sick days or something of those you kind of expect, but like, you know, some sort of consideration for the extreme working conditions, for the heat, that's that's been a near constant. Um, it's also one of the constants between many of these is the, I would say surprisingly high percentage who votes to authorize a strike. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we love the idea of, and I think a lot of our audience will be like, well, obviously you, you, you fight for, you know, what you deserve and everything, but like it is difficult to potentially go without pay of course. for an extended period of time. It is not an easy thing. And so for almost everyone in these to be willing to do it, I think is actually pretty amazing. And finally, the, the language from UPS, you said that there's been a little bit of progress, which I'm not actually familiar with, so I'm uh, eager to see that. But when they were like, we, we have nothing more to give. Right. Do you? I mean, you? when you consider the profits that they've enjoyed, um, especially you know during the pandemic when people didn't go out to buy things, they mm -hmm. ordered things, right? I, they do not want to share those profits fairly with the workers who generated that revenue and the profits you know, within the revenue to begin with. And this is a tale as old as time. The only thing that really differentiates these UPS workers and workers at 
honestly, the vast majority of companies across this country is that they have the protection of the Teamsters Union. I'm assuming they have a decent strike fund to at least provide, you know, some help as the strike goes on. But if the strike goes through, and at the moment it appears that is very likely, it will be one of the largest strikes in American history. And consequential. Very consequential. And so then we're gonna we're gonna end up in a similar position that we've been in when people were, you know, looking at the possibility that there was gonna be some sort of, you know, a train strike. Um, this is something that obviously affects a lot of different people. Lots of, what was it, like they said something like 6% of all freight was shipped via UPS in the past year. So that is a good chance of affecting lots of people for the things that they buy, mm -hmm. for businesses and everything. We remember what supply chain issues were like during the pandemic. And so the question is going to be like, who can hold out? Um, and so if you want this to succeed, if you want the striking workers to get what you think they deserve or what certainly they think they deserve, then we have to be willing in all of these cases, whether it's trains or UPS or flight attendants or literally anything. Like, are you willing to be inconvenienced? To be inconvenienced in time or availability of products and services or the price of those. Mm -hmm. And your willingness to help be a part of this is very often a pretty important factor in whether it succeeds or not. Absolutely. Or falls apart. And just to give you some more information on, on what you know the sticking point is at the moment, why they haven't come to an agreement on a new labor contract is <laughs> while UPS is willing to concede on all the things I listed earlier, they won't concede on the pay raises that the workers are asking for. And when you look at the amount of money UPS made versus you know what the workers here are asking for, you'll get a sense of the lack of fairness to say the least here. So according to the Teamsters, UPS made $100 billion in revenue. And then look, revenue is not profits, right? Revenue is different from profits. You've got overhead, you've got people to pay, you have all sorts of, you know, business operations to pay for. So don't think that the hundred billion dollars in revenue is purely profit. But over 13 billion <laughs> in profits last year alone. 13 billion just in profits. In profits, after all of the costs, after everything that they end up paying for, the company ends up paying for mm -hmm. it, they're left with 13 billion in profits. Well, I think, look, I'm not a businessman or whatever, but the yeah. standard maxim is you'll do it for 13 billion, for 12 billion, why bother? Hmm, if you're only point. gonna make 12 good billion point. in profit, then it might as well be zero. They might you close up down. shop. They might close exactly. up shop, John. There's just no point. But what I'm hoping is. I don't get out of bed unless it's 13 billion. That's what I'm saying. Can you imagine? No. <laughs> Me either. I actually can't. I don't know what that'd be like. <laughs> yeah, and look, I, if this does end up leading to a strike, I think there could be a silver lining to that as well. In that, it shows you the power of organized labor, mm -hmm. and I do think you need organized labor in this country in order to provide some leverage for ordinary people. Like if you just rely on the electoral system. I mean, clearly that hasn't been enough, right? Mm -hmm. And I think organized labor has way more leverage in pushing politicians to listen to their best interests and what they demand, as opposed to, you know, for the most part, listening to their their corporate donors. Yeah, you know, I look. I think the case could certainly be made in general, but specifically on issues like this, if you're talking about wanting your wages to be raised, your benefits to be improved, in theory, there is a place in that conversation for Congress, but they've abdicated their role in that. Almost universally, there was obviously a little bit of help during the pandemic. There were things like the child tax credit effectively, which sort of for some people overall increased the amount of pay that they have. But in general, the story of the past few years has been people having to do it for themselves. Yep. Now, thankfully, sometimes you have people like Jamal Bowman, Representative Bowman showing up. Yeah. But I don't think that was a necessary thing for them to do it. Um, and I don't know how much it affects the chance that it succeeds. I think that their collective effort is what's going to make. Them oh, open absolutely! Up. Their collective effort is the most important part of all of this. But I, I will say, look, my my issue with progressive lawmakers in recent, I would say over the last year, year and a half, is. It feels like they've kind of shifted away from fighting aggressively for the economic policies that people desperately need in this country. So even though it might not actually lead to a change in like policy, seeing you know Jamal Bowman there standing in solidarity with the workers, 
signal something to everyone about what his priorities are, yeah. right? And it also helps the workers to see that they have support, that they have progressives in Congress who actually care about the fight that they're engaging in. Great. So that's really good. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.